All right, so we're finishing up the Are You Afraid of the Dark three-part mini-series of part three, Destroy All Top Hats. Now, just a little catch-up from the last episode. Where did we end on? Uh, the, you know, the, um, the carnival showed up in town, uh, and they all went to it. And then Gavin went missing. And then the next day, uh, Rachel was the only one to remember. Everyone else forgot. Why does she remember? Well, you find out in this one. You find out everything. Um, so, we start off with a little backstory on Mr. Top Hat. His real name was Marcus. And he was offered... Uh, he worked at a carnival and... He wasn't, his carnival wasn't ready to go by the time it was supposed to. And it resulted in one of the rides breaking and a family, uh, two parents and four of their five children died, leaving one of them still alive and an orphan, a little girl. That comes back into play later. <clears throat> um, and so he... He is disgraced. Everybody is mad at him because of what happened. Why he didn't go to jail, I don't know. Because that would be... You think he would. But he is made an offer by someone we don't see on screen. But he's... You know, it's revealed to be the devil later. And, uh... uh basically, he says that... Um... He will... He will go to every town. And he will entertain many people. But when that is done... He will leave, and no one will remember who he is. No one will remember anything that happened. So if anything bad does happen, no one will remember it. How they? The only thing they didn't explain is how he just take. I mean, he they explained how he take control of people, but why? Why he like grabs people? You know, I know that was in her story, but it doesn't get explained why he does that. At least I didn't catch that. So then we go back to present day, and this was all a story told by a one-armed man. Uh, I think it's the guy that uh, the mask was talking about, you know, in the mask. It wasn't me. It was the one-armed man. Anyway, uh, he tells him a story, and he says that the top hat is the source of his power. So the Midnight Society band together to take him down. Once they get there, uh, to, to get there, though, they, uh, they need help from... Akiko's brother, Hideo, to take him there. This results in a sequence that, to me, doesn't make any sense. Well, it does once you put in context certain things, but at the time, it didn't. Uh, they have to stop to use the bathroom, and as soon as they stop at the rest stop, I'm like, either something Mr. Top Hat's going to happen, or Michael Myers is going to show up and give him some teeth. Bash his, choke him or bash his brain into the... Okay, I just watched Halloween, 20, Halloween 2018 last night, so... But no, he goes in there, take a whiz, and scorpions start to show up. I'm like, how? How does he even know they're coming after him? They left, I mean, you know. And why would they take... I don't understand it. And... It's, they, you know, you see in the trailer, Graham is driving the car, so you knew something like, I thought, direct, I thought Graham was going to drive him. Sure enough, he does, terribly, and they get there, and they set up their plans, and, um, she gets, or, uh, um, I think this is where I meet the one-armed man, I think. I don't know. Maybe not. No. no. I was making my supper. I made a sandwich when it happened, so I don't know. But I knew it before. she gets her ceremonial mask, the uh, man I decided he's supposedly wearing this. And they go in masks to get the top hat, but it's all a trick. Because the, they go, 
the four of them go, well, all four of them need to go, I don't know, but all four of them go to cause distraction by turning all the lights off and stuff. And Rachel goes, top bat, but it leads into a, um, a, the big top. The big, the big, uh, tent. And everyone is there, and Mr. Top is there, and the beard, the bothered bearded man that brought them there is there. Uh, in the meanwhile, the other four are being taken by a mind-controlled Adam and Hede Hedeo, who looks like a clown. And they take them, and they're all just standing there, and Mr. Top Hat, or Marcus, a, um, is going to saw her in half. Well, that doesn't get that far, because she grabs his staff, which he reveals is the really real source of his power. And right when he did it, I'm like, dude, you don't reveal your source of your power. Although it's painfully obvious that it was his staff. Even when that guy said it was his hat, I'm like, are you sure? Because he has that thing. Wouldn't that be the source? Only way to destroy it is fire, which I think is... Uh, I don't... Oh, you don't need to destroy magical items with fire. Sure. Didn't work on a Necronomicon, though. Just saying. And I don't... I think the whole making it only be destroyed by fire is a little too prolonging. Otherwise, she'd just be able to smash it. She does try. She tries to smash it on this pipe. All she does is dent the pipe. So, yeah, that doesn't work. So it's got to be fire. So, when, once she grabs it from him, though, her friends become out of the, the, of the mind control. Although, why Adam and Hideo didn't go out of the mind control, I don't know. It's just the Midnight Society. Which is kind of futile, because then they run into this area you've seen in the trailers. Where they're in the water, and the fog, and all that stuff. Excuse me. And they all get taken, one by one, by this weird, long-haired, crow-looking dude. Except for her. And then eventually... She's face to face, and he's, Mr. Top Hat or Marcus is, you know, I think, and he doesn't say it in so many words, but I think he wanted to be stopped, because he, he made a point of saying that no one remembers him, and that she's the only one that remembers him, and, you know, when the show's done, people forget who he is, people don't know who he is anymore, and now that's a point, why would you even make that deal? You know, you, you know, someone who works in a carnival wants attention, but you're going to get it only for that night, and then it's going to go away, and no one's going to know who you are. You'll have no more attention. You you know, what's the point? Right? So, this whole shutdown's in the rain, by the way. And there's a fire in the rain. I set fire to the rain. I don't know, but there's a fire burning. And... At first, though, I thought the bald guy was going to turn on him. Because I'm like, he went to them, but it's a trap. But it could be a double turn where he's actually, he actually wants to be set free. Because it's revealed that the bald guy was with him when they made the deal. And they don't show it, but, well, he might actually be dead anyway. Because she, like, electrocutes the fucker. <laughs> With the, she uses the staff and it hits him with like a lightning thing and there's water all around so he, he like let you, I think he's dead, actually, um, yeah she uses it she breaks she shows it throws it in the fire, and it, you know it, <clears throat> well she also uses it on the minions but she throws it in the fire and Mr. Top Hat turns old first and at first and then just <sighs> dissipates. What happens to I don't see what happens to the carnival though. And then we cut to back at the Midnight Society. Well, they go to leave. And Rachel and Gavin are holding hands. Okay. Yes, it was a big ordeal, but was it earned? Maybe. I just... Gavin wasn't in the special long enough. They had a little bit of chemistry at the beginning, but he's taken. He's not even in the entire second half. He shows up in this to then be taken again. And they're not even... They don't even really communicate, talk to each other towards the end. Until the, towards the end here. Where they're, they're talking. We're in a werewolf costume for some reason. And um, they're like, 
You have any plans tonight? Well, I got something at midnight, but I can't talk about it. Because they're not supposed to talk about it. And, uh... It looks like they're going to kiss, but they don't. Because it's a kid's show. And, though, it would, oh, I think it would have hurt. But maybe they weren't comfortable with that. I don't know. The kids. Who knows? And then it, show, it cuts to them. She's talking about the vote. Because before, they were going to have a vote to see if she was still in. So they get there. He, she, he gets, she gets there. And they're all sitting. They go, okay, time for the vote. She's like, what? And they're like, uh, who wants Rachel to stay in the Midnight Society? And no one raises their hands. They're just sitting there. Until the weeds just... And everybody raises their hand. It was all... It was a joke. And then they answer the question. Why her? You figured it out by now. Good for you. I didn't at first. I didn't figure it out until they said it, actually. But... So they revealed earlier that the story she told was a memory. Um, although, I don't know what happened to the dad in that situation, because in, in her story, there was a mom and a dad, and she's only with her mom. Her mom's not even in this last part, to be honest with you. But there was a mom and a dad in the story. And someone, some girls get taken, and... She's only one remembers, but over time, she says in her story, the girl forgot. And right away, not right away, but at some point, I told my son, I said, she's a girl in the story. He's like, what? I'm like, the story was about her. It doesn't explain both the dad, but it's it's her. And that the, Mr. Top Hat or Marcus, he reveals that, that it was her. This was earlier, of course, and not now, but, like, it was her that was there, and she forgot, but he kept appearing to her in her dreams, and that's how she was able to make the story, how, so it was all just a big coincidence after she told the story, the carnival showed up. Yeah. Not a million years with that ever actually happen in real life. You tell a story about something and then that particular something starts to happen. Ironically. So, like I said, big twist. Why, Rachel? Well, like I said, back in the olden days, when Mark when Marcus had the carnival, the faulty carnival, and there was a family. A husband a mother, father, and four out of the five children died, right? Leaving one behind. Little girl. That little girl was Rachel's great grandmother. Or great great grandma great grandmother. Uh-huh. So it's in her lineage. I didn't even think of that. I'm like, are they trying to, well I did sort of, because I'm sitting there I'm like, are they gonna say she's related to her? Or are they gonna say no, the one thing I thought was, are they going to say that's her? Because that's kind of stupid. Like, she can't be like a reincarnation or anything. And it's not even the same little girl they show. I'm like, I'm going to say that's her. Because that would be really stupid. But no, they did the story thing. I'm like, oh, yeah, I called that. And then they said it was her grandmother. I'm like, or great-grandmother. I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. That makes more sense saying it's just her because it's magic. And then, this is what got me jumping up. Because I thought we were going to see something we didn't. But he got me jumping up because it's Gavin's turn to tell a story and he grabs the, the Don Dairy Creamer as it was before. He grabs the dust and he says, Submit it for the approval. Man, that's society. I call this story. <sighs> Throws it in. The Return of the Ghastly Grinner. Right away, I'm like, No! Stood up. That's one of my favorite episodes is the Ghastly Grinner. Just started hearing noise. I'm like, Oh, no, they're not going to. Are they? Dog. It was a dog! A fucking dog. Whose dog, though? I didn't think of that at first. I'm like, whose dog? I'm like, a dog? I'm like, oh, are they going to have, like, Gary walk up? No, it was Adam. I'm like, duh. And I thought, oh, maybe Adam should join them by the end. And they they, they sort of do hint at that, because they're like, he's like, what's going on? They're like, uh... And they all kind of look at each other, and they smile, and Rachel's like, so Adam... Know any scary stories? And that's how it ends. I'm like, 
okay, so are they going to continue off of this? Because I'm assuming this was the movie that was supposed to come to theaters, and they scrapped it and said, let's just put it on TV, three different parts as a miniseries. Because you take the commercials out, it would probably be a two and a half hour movie that could work for something to play in the theater, right? So I'm thinking that's what it was, is it was the movie, and they just cut it into three parts and put it on Nickelodeon. Because you got someone like Jeremy Ray Taylor, who's been in It, and you're going to have him on a TV show. Now, if this does, get Green Dead as a TV show, and they bring Jeremy Ray Taylor back, which I don't know, because most of the times, I don't know, I've seen in the past where they do TV versions, and this was on TV, don't get me wrong, but they recast like the big star, like let's say, um, oh, what was it? Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventures, the and the live action one, not the animated. They recast, but they recast everyone. But I'm just saying, they probably could get Jim Ray Taylor to come back. I mean, he he's not doing it movies anymore. And I don't know what other if they do Ghost Goosebumps three and have him in it, maybe. But I don't mind him. He's a, he's a pretty good child actor. They were all pretty good child actors, actually. And I know that... I've heard of people talk about Mr. Top Hat. Oh, he's not the best. In the first two parts, maybe not. But in this one, he actually shows some emotion. You get his backstory. You get... He's in it a little bit more. And I kind of like him better in this, in, this, in this part, to be honest. He shows the emotion that you would have... It's basically, you know, he wanted this, but it's basically a curse. And while he doesn't say it out loud, you could tell, you could see in his eyes, he wants to be free. He wanted her to find him, but he's got to put up a little fight so it doesn't look obvious. He wanted her to find him. He wanted it to end. Because deep inside his heart, he didn't want to be cursed anymore. You could tell that from the emotion in his face. There's the scene where he's, it's going to end. Your story will end tonight. And it's her story. She came up with the story. But it's, you know, it had you know, memories. But yeah. And it did end. He didn't say that it would end with her losing. He said it would end. I think he wanted it to happen. And I think that the actor who plays Dr. Mr. Top Hat did a better job in this part than he has in the other two. The other two he had, he was sparse throughout the, the parts. But in this one, wait, Gavin was in part two, wasn't he? I don't know. Because Adam went missing at the end of part one. Gavin was in part two. I don't know what I'm thinking of. I don't know. I don't know. I just realized Gavin was not part two. went missing at the end. But it still doesn't seem like they had much chemistry between the two of them. I don't know. But I hope if this green gets greenlit as a regular series, they go back to the format of just them sitting around the campfire and telling stories, and we get the story within the within the show, you know. Because I kind of I kind of miss that kind of thing. Like in part one, when she was telling the story, it brought back the feels of the original series. And my son and I watched the entire first season uh, last weekend, actually, and I, I think he he enjoyed it. I didn't ask, but I, I could tell he liked it. And so I might bring season two to watch. Then we might have to stop and do reviews then, because I'm not going to want to rewatch them again. Although I have to rewatch that stupid fairy tale one again. Because so I didn't tell you about that. I actually recorded a review, or I sat and did a review of the first episode of season two of Are You Afraid of the Dark? The fairy tale one. And it didn't record. And I'm like, no, it's too late. It's when I was sitting out there trying to do it. I'm, 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 like, I'm not going to worry about it. But, all in all, guys, this was pretty good. I don't rate TV episodes, but this was pretty good. Uh, as a whole, the whole thing was pretty good. Um, I know, I, I believe it was supposed to be the movie. And that's what I believe. But, yeah, all pretty good. Um, not the same as the original series. It's coming off of the uh, Tale of the Silver Sight. Which I thought was pretty good. One of my favorite episodes, of course. It's a three-parter. But it's not a three-hour-long episode. It's three half-hour episodes. So it's an hour and a half. But they call it a TV movie. But yeah, still pretty good. Um, like I said, acting's pretty good. Mr. Top Hat in this last half, pretty good. But yeah, all in all, 
pretty good. I can't talk anymore, man. Love pieces of chicken grease.